O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise and thanks to God. This morning dawns, dear Savior, my praise and thanks I bring for your rich grace and favor. With songs of joy I sing, though seated on your throne, you still. There was a man living in Alexandria, Egypt. He was born in 295 AD. He was a church leader and a steadfast confessor of the truth of God. His name was Athanasius. Athanasius fought against Arius, who was a man who believed that Jesus wasn't quite fully God. He was the son of God. He was really great, but he wasn't equal to the Father. He was not of one essence with the Father. And so in 325 AD, there was a church council in Nicaea to hammer out these details, to ask the question, what does the Bible actually say of who Jesus is? And this trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Athanasian was steadfast in his conviction that the Bible says that Jesus Christ is one with the Father and the Spirit in this mysterious thing called the triune God, but also that he is truly human. And that makes a that makes all the difference in the world because Jesus needs to be truly human in order to live a life of a human in our place. He needs to have gone through everything we have gone through and done it perfectly so his righteousness is legitimate. And he needs to be fully, fully God as well because when he dies on the cross, this death must pay the price for the sins of the entire world. There have been plenty of people who have died for you, but none of them could stop this runaway train coming after you called death because of our sin. And so this was very important. And Athanasian, Athanasius did suffer for his conviction. He was exiled from his hometown, Alexandria, at least five times. He was almost killed and yet he remained steadfast. And so there is a creed that the church wrote years later called the Athanasian Creed. It's the long creed that we use on Trinity Sunday. It wasn't written by Athanasius, but it was named after him to honor him for his steadfast con conviction of the truth of Jesus Christ. And much of this, I'm sure, was inspired by the letter to the Hebrews. And here is Hebrews chapter 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various places. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir over all things, and through him he made the universe. 
The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. And speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds and servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, he calls him God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the toil, with the oil of joy. The word of the Lord. Notice what the writer to the Hebrews is doing here, and only in chapter 1 he does this throughout the whole letter, the whole book of Hebrews. He is making the case that, yes, Jesus is the Son. He is, in a way, distinct from the Father and the Spirit, but in the mystery of the Trinity, he is also one. He is true God, and there is only one God. He says, "He says, your throne, O God, he says to the Son. And he compares him in chapter 1 with the angels. So if Arius was right, and that Jesus was just a messenger, that's all angel means, a messenger, a, a, a very important messenger, and the, the, maybe even the Son of God that comes from the Father. Well, he's just like the angels. But the writer to the Hebrews says, no, he's not like the angels. The angels worship him because he's God. If the angels are going to worship someone, and the angels are correct in their worship, and you should only have one God, and if they worship Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ is God. And so, in a very in very delicate but very profound way, the writer to the Hebrew says, Jesus is God. And that means everything to Athanasius. It means everything to us, because this person, Jesus Christ, is true God, and that means he can and has saved us.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin, nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.